decals, decals, or from my friends across the pond, decals, are that graphic element that can really make a model pop. Indeed, the graphics displayed on a particular prototype are frequently a reason many modelers choose their subject to represent in scale. Along with the decals that are supplied in model kits, there are numerous specialized decal manufacturers. Every manufacturer's decals have characteristic properties, so it's an extremely good idea to test a scrap piece off the sheet. If there are no scraps, then start with the least essential decal first so you can get a feel for how the sheet works. These are the tools that I use when working with decals. First off is an extremely sharp knife, as well as a stone, to keep the edge keen. The blade needs to be as sharp as possible. A dull blade will raise the edges of the decal and make them difficult to settle down. For a cutting surface, I use a piece of sheet acrylic. I also use a small rectangular piece of acrylic that I fashioned into a straight edge. The acrylic improves my visibility and is less likely to scratch the decal. When working with decals, warm water is essential, so I use a small hot water bath along with a smooth cotton towel. Decal application requires the use of setting solutions. To prevent spills, I've transferred several of the solutions to glass bottles. The blue label is Microscale's Microset. This solution is applied to the surface of the model. Although the Microset is described as mildly softening the decal, its main function seems to be as a surfactant for reducing the surface tension. Microsol, also manufactured by Microscale, is used on the surface of the decal to soften it and allow the decal to conform to the surface. Solvacet, now manufactured by Walters, is also used to soften the decal. Its action is somewhat more aggressive than Microsol. I also use a pair of cotton pliers. I've thinned out the tip and gently smoothed out all the sharp edges. This makes it easier to pick up a decal without causing a tear or cut. Once the decal is wet, I place it on a small piece of glass. I also have several brushes that I use only for decaling. Finally, another element to note here is that the area is clean. Decaling is a finishing technique, so why not afford the process a properly clean area? Show a bit of class and restrict your weathering to the model rather than your work area or perhaps in some cases the modeler. The decaling process involves four steps all of which build on each other and are equally important. For maximum adaptation, it's important that the decal is applied to a smooth surface. The most popular technique is to overcoat the surface of the model with a clear gloss agent prior to application. The function of the gloss coat is to smooth over the grain in the painted surface. While this method works, it's an additional layer of material. In many cases, the rough surface is only made less rough, and to achieve a truly smooth surface, quite a bit of gloss would need to be applied. Building up an additional layer softens the detail of a model. This is especially significant when the model is covered with small rivet detail. For this reason, I have long since abandoned the application of a gloss coat. I prefer to apply the decal directly to the layer of paint. Obviously, this requires that the painted surface be smooth. So my surface preparation begins with the initial application of base primer and color. I explain how to achieve a smooth application of material in video 13 on surface primer. Since this initial painted surface is much smoother, it only takes a few passes with a scuff pad or ultra-fine sanding sponge to achieve a super smooth surface. Proper trimming of a decal can save you a lot of headaches later. I always use the sharpest blade possible so I don't wrinkle the edges of the decal. To maintain the edge, I touch up the tip periodically. Here, I'm using my homemade acrylic straight edge. The edge is brought down to just expose the slightest portion of the graphic. Having the straight edge over the graphic is the best way to visualize the border as well as safeguard against any damage to the essential portion of the decal. The curved portions are done freehand. Here is the trimmed decal. 
The critical feature to note here is that the blade only went deep enough to cut the film. Putting heavy cuts into the paper will wrinkle the edges of the decal, leaving them more visible later. Another approach to trimming is especially valuable to model railroaders, who put great stock in car numbers and dates. Railroad decal sheets frequently come with long strings of numbers, giving the modeler many options for individual car numbers. The easiest way to cut up the strings so that the numbers can be mixed and matched is to follow this sequence. This way, it's easy to reassemble the numbers in a straight string and maintain the spacing by using the decal film as a guide. Here I'm using an oversized sheet and a pencil for demonstration purposes. The sheet is first mounted on my cutting surface. Once mounted, it's quite easy to squarely section up the string of numbers. Application begins by wetting the decal. Note that I hold onto the decal. The decal stays in the water only long enough to curl and then begin relaxing. Once the decal is wet, it's transferred to the glass plate. Here I remove the excess film. A liberal amount of microset is applied to the model. The decal is then transferred to the model. It's helpful to keep a liberal amount of liquid under the decal while it's being positioned. A dry towel is used to remove the excess liquid around the edge of the decal. A corner of the towel is moistened in the warm water and is used to express the liquid from under the decal. A brush is used to fine-tune the position of the decal. Microsol is then brushed over the decal. The decal typically exhibits some degree of wrinkling as it reacts to the microsol. When the decal is tightened up and the wrinkling disappeared, I compress the surface with a warm, moistened towel. I then apply a coat of Solvacet. The Solvacet usually causes the decal to wrinkle and tighten back up again. I again compress the decal with a warm, moistened towel. Depending on the adaptation, I might repeat this step. Any persistent bubbles can be pricked with a blade and softened with a drop of Solvacet. Decal stripes can be cut from solid color decal film. These are used to outline the numbers on this McLaren. The curve portion was done by simply softening the decal stripe and adapting it to the curve. A strip cutter can be used when a large amount of striping is necessary. Or a square can be used when you just need a single length. Note that only the center section here will be used. Decal striping was used to outline this portion of the windscreen on this P51. Decal was also used to create the fastener detail. A syringe is used as a punch. Once wet, the dots are harvested. The dots can then be easily placed into position. Once the decals are in place and dry, they can be overcoated with your favorite flat or gloss finish.